Scanning for audio. Welcome once again to the Tin Dog Podcast. As I'm aware, the Doctor Who logo, the new one, is announced later on this week as of recording. I'm going to go over now directly to my future self to give you some feedback on what I think about its revelation. Scanning for audio. Right, here we go, watching the BBC website. It says, click to play, and we're about to see what the new Doctor Who logo looks like. As always... A little bit more trepidation than I'd like. Okay, the little spinny BBC logo-y thing's going around. Here we go. There's a D and a W in the shape of a TARDIS. Looks a bit 1980s. 2010, nearly here. Right! Looks like something off an old comic. Lovely. You know what? It's alright. It's not my idea of fun, but... It's alright. It's not the best logo in the world, but, you know... You have to go a long way to beat the diamond logo. Yeah, yeah. Let's just react badly. It'll grow on me. I know it will. And I'm surprised that it's not long and thin like the other one was. Because that worked really well on the spine of magazines or on the spine of DVDs. Let's just hope that the Region 2 DVDs stick with the logo and the design that they've got already all the way through to the end. Because there's only 30 odd stories left to release. No, it's not a bad logo. It's not a bad design. Anyway... Let's get on with the show, shall we? The other mind has now left the Matrix. And now, back to the present. Where, this week, I'll be talking about Frontier in Space. This is the commander of the Draconian Battlecruiser. We are locked onto your vessel and are about to board. I found these two dragons in the hold. But that, that's impossible. They're only just locking on. How do they get on board? Stowaways. That's it. They were stowaways. They were sending messages. That's right. They were helping the dragons. Doctor, what's happening? What's going on? I'm not sure, Joe. Something rather intriguing. If you destroy our ship, you won't get the cargo. Oh, so that's what it's all about. Part one of the two story boxed set, four discs, dealing with the six and six part stories, that's two sixes, or twelve as they're known in the trade, Frontier in Space and Planet of the Daleks. This week we're just going to be talking about Frontier in Space, and of course next time you've probably guessed it's going to be Planet of the Daleks, and of course the new Tom Baker audio, that's the Dead Shoes. Yes, I know you're all excited to hear what I think about the new recolorized version of episode 3, or was it 2, of Planet of the Daleks, but that will have to wait. No. This week, it's the remarkably good frontier in space. According to the blurb, it's the 26th century. Known space is divided between the great empires of Earth and Draconia. A fragile peace exists between the humans and the lizard-like Draconians. A peace that is put in jeopardy when each race claims that the other is stealing cargo vessels, and they're being raided with warships. When the TARDIS accidentally brings the Doctor and Joe aboard the Earth cargo ship C-982, they find it under attack. As the ship is boarded, a strange pulsing sound fills the air. The crew believe their attackers are draconians, but the Doctor and Joe see only Ogrons, British, Simeon mercenaries, who steal the cargo, including the TARDIS, and head off into space. The Doctor investigations take him to Earth, the Moon, and then to Draconia itself. He discovers that the Ogrons are employed by the sworn enemy, the Master, who is attempting to provoke a war between the two space empires. The Doctor suspects the scale of his plan is too grand, even for the Master. 
yeah, I'm not even going to tell you the rest of that because it gives far too much away. The fact that it's in the Dalek War box set probably gives away who's actually manipulating things. Like I said, it's a six-part story, and there are arguments about it being, well, a little bit slow. But it is, after all, a poetry story. It's a thing of its time. 1973 was a pretty good year for Doctor Who. Sadly, this is the last time you ever get to see Delgado playing the Master. And, as an extra on one of the discs, you do get a remarkably good documentary, all about Roger Delgado's career. It's one of the nicest, most warm-hearted documentaries going. No one has a bad word to say about this man. Frontier in Space is the nearest Doctor Who ever gets to being Star Trek. It's a well-known and popular phrase. People have been using it for a long time when reviewing this story. And it's kind of true. It's closer in many respects to, well, Babylon 5. When, for example, the Earth-Mimbari War was caused by a misunderstanding when the Mimbari fleet turns up with its gun ports open and the Earth Alliance think that they're about to be attacked. Exactly the same thing has happened when a noble of Draconia turns up to meet the humans and it has arrived in a cruiser. Of course, Earth thinks there's going to be a war. And then, of course, there is. It is space opera, something that Doctor Who's never done in a huge amount, apart from, say, the space pirates, for some time. And it's done remarkably well here. It's got great locations. It's got some superb model shots. I'm very, very glad to see that there isn't an alternative to watch different models done in a CGI way. Because these models are Ian Schoons. They're Matt Irvine. They're remarkably well done. All right, a couple of them, many, many of them, in fact, actually are Jerry Anderson's style stuff that's been augmented. Perhaps not enough, because you can see the very models themselves appear in episodes of UFO, but don't hold that against a budget-strapped crew. Yeah, a lot of people get locked up, and a lot of people escape, and a lot more people get locked up, and a lot of people escape, and a lot more people get locked up, and a lot of people escape, and a lot more people get locked up, and a lot of people escape, and there's talk of the mind probe, and classic Doctor Who stuff. There's some great throwaway lines by the Master. There's some wonderful small jokes. You can really detect the friendship between Delgado and Pertwee here. Katie Manny's are actually given quite a lot to do in this story. And as always, it's of its time. The thing worthy of mentioning in this review isn't actually part of the story frontier in space at all. It's one of the DVD extras. A small sci-fi story has been inserted. While I say a sci-fi story, it actually has the feel more of somebody's, well, degree piece. A dissertation about why Frontier in Space is so important. It's in two parts, one in Frontier in Space and one in Planet of the Daleks. It concerns somebody who creates stories, who delves into the past of science fiction and tells the stories to the last remnants of the human race as they sleep out the millennia. I won't tell you how that ends, but it's well worth viewing, and I'm not quite sure of the motivation behind it. It's extremely low budget. Let's face it, it is a DVD extra. It's hardly the main feature. But like Doctor Who, the ideas behind it are so much more impressive than the way it's done. Of course, it's got the feel of a documentary, because it is a documentary. But it falls between two stools, but it falls so perfectly as to become a whole stool in itself. Did that sound worse than I meant it to? Perhaps so. Well, well worth viewing. And perhaps revisiting in a future Doctor Who DVD release by To Entertain. Yes, we all know who the masterminding villains are going to turn out to be. Because of the fact that it comes in the Dalek War box set. It would come as a massive surprise if it turned out to be the Cybermen. But in saying that, if you are a fan of, say, the Dalek Empire series of Big Finish Audios... Again, it's well worth tracking down. The information text is great. Everything on this disc is remarkably well put together. The only thing that's worthy of cringing of is, well, the coming soon. The chameleon boxed set? Are you sure? Planet of Fire and the King's Demons? Hmm, perhaps we'll get back to that one another time. Yeah. 
March the 4th, 1215. Something very wrong here. He's not the king. Who is he? Why? Allow me to introduce Camilla. Your Majesty seems in need of a doctor. You cannot be allowed to alter the course of history, even indirectly. Take them. It's only a matter of time before I undermine the key civilizations of the universe. Oh, my dear doctor, you have been naive. Where did you find this? The Vsauce Triangle. It means there are people from Trial here. My home planet. <laughs> the chameleon turned into the master? Oh, no. <laughs> I am the master. So what? You will obey me or die. You don't understand, Doctor. If you're holding back anything that will aid the master, our friendship is at an end. See that this Doctor burns. The Draconians are well worth mentioning. They are a Doctor Who villain that has not been brought back. They are a society. They're very Star Trek in their nature. They have their own codes, their own practices, and they're not the monsters. In this, the monsters could be described really as the Ogrons. No, the Draconians are so good, they deserve to come back. And they have. They've come back in the comics with Absom Dark, Dalek Killer, and very, very recently in a big finish audio paper cuts coming soon from big finish productions paper cuts hear now the words of the emperor at this time in the 68th year of the serpent the world faces its greatest threat plague ravages the empire of a hundred rising suns as darkness approaches Draconia must stand alone or perish. Well, go on, Doctor. You can win in one move. Your life is still at my command. The Prefect is in danger! The door! Every death, even an Imperial murder, needs the correct ritual. Doctor! The place will tear apart! Hold on! Mighty Emperor. You little fool. Where is it? Something sliced right through his ceremonial armor. It must be here somewhere. Multiple cuts to the head and torso. The rituals of the shrine must be observed. I can hardly refuse, can I? Can't you? Why not? Because I, Charlotte, am an honorable noble of Draconia. Me? I'm not a ghost, I promise. Bigfinish.com they are a great race, and they could so easily be brought back for the new series. And so before I move on, I'll just do a quick astrology. And remember, next time, it's the second part of this box set. It's Planet of the Daleks. So until then, be seeing you. Here's a astrology. For Nicholas Trevor Edwards, born on the 12th of October 1967. You were born in the time of the Second Doctor, with Yeti in the Ascendant. Stories shown on your birthday of The Mind Robber, Part 5, Paradise Towers, Part 2, and Remembrance of the Daleks, Part 2. Your Hoostrology. Don't worry about somebody else's fiction. Escape in a giant book. You may be word perfect today, But do you truly believe in what you're saying? Are you truly a great architect of the future? Perhaps a subsection 9 death is a little over the top. An old friend's new trick surprises you a little. And remember that burying the past may not always be the best course of action. Do you honestly want to take sugar with your tea? And remember, if you'd like to keep the Tin Dog podcast running, simply visit eBay, type in Whostrology, That's W-H-O-S-T-R-O-L-O-G-Y and buy your very own Hoostrology reading, which will arrive promptly on your desk, written specifically for you, in certificate form. So until next time, be seeing you.
You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Thank you.